bacteriophage can defend themselves by uh, creating a nucleus-like structure inside of the bacteria that they infect. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, what, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the In Defense of Phage ed edition. I'm Julie Wolf, Science Communication Specialist here at ASM. And today we're going to be talking about a paper that was recently published in Nature that shows a new method of phage defense against the bacterial antiphage systems. Now, it's important to keep in mind that CRISPR, when we say CRISPR, of course, it's the palindrome for clustered, regularly interspersed, short palindromic repeats, right? So that CRISPR systems can vary. Uh, and we have a table here that illustrates a lot of the different ways that they can vary. They are all bacterial antiphage systems, but the protein or proteins that are used in order to target phage DNA varies, as does whether or not the target is actually DNA or RNA or DNA and RNA. Uh, they do use programmable RNAs in order to find the target genomic sequence. Um, and the proteins, such as Cas9, when they find that particular DNA or RNA, I guess for Cas9 it would be DNA sequence, uh, which is programmed by that CRISPR RNA, the Cas9 will then cut that phage um, DNA, effectively inactivating it and saving the bacteria, uh, the bacteria from further infection with that bacteriophage. Now, some anti-CRISPR methods have already been described, uh, such as anti-CRISPR proteins that phages can generate, and those will effectively inactivate the Cas9 or the endonuclease activity. However, the report here highlights a new way in which phage uh, can protect their genetic material. So let's dive into what I think are three of the key experiments on the next page. It began with an observation that some phage are not targeted by CRISPR uh, RNAs. And so here we're looking at a variety of different types of CRISPR systems. Those are indicated at the bottom of the, the panel on the top here. So you see the two different um, phage infection um, blots. And we're looking at two different phages, the JBD30 and the phage KZ. And so if we look at just the very first two of those panels on top of each other, we're looking at a CRISPR RNA that's targeting the JBD30. Uh, and this is on a lawn of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, I should mention. So all of the, the gray is where there is bacteria, and then the darker part is where the phage have replicated and lysed those cells, so you just see a hole or a plaque where the phage have infected. And of course, if the CRISPR RNA is targeting the JBD30, you don't expect the phage to be able to infect those bacterial cells. And we see on the top, a nice clear gray, there is no phage um, infection, that is visible. But when you have a different phage infecting, because that CRISPR RNA is, is targeting JBD30, the phage KZ is able to infect just fine, as one would expect. Then when we look at the next three panels, we see three different phage KZ targeting um, CRISPR RNAs. And yet, although the phage um, should be inactivated by these CRISPR systems, we see phage infections throughout all of these. Uh, and so this is where the, the researchers turned next. The next question that they wanted to ask was, well, perhaps the phage DNA cannot be destroyed by these uh, CRISPR endonucleases. And so they looked at a variety of different ways that the phage DNA, when purified, might be targeted by both restriction enzymes, which target phage DNA, uh, as well as various um, CRISPR systems. And so I'm showing you here just uh, one of the pieces of evidence that they had to support that, in fact, Cas9, which is um, one of the uh, CRISPR endonucleases that they were looking at, can, in fact, degrade the phage KZ genomic um, DNA. So there's nothing special about this DNA that keeps it from being targeted by this Cas9 enzyme. So they then wanted to ask, how are these different systems interacting if we look under the microscope? And so that's on the far right, that's the experimental results here. They're looking at um, immunostaining of either Cas9, which is going to be the endonuclease inside of the bacteria, and that's seen on the top. You can see that it's kind of uh, in the red, dispersed throughout what the, the cytoplasm of the bacterial cell. Uh, and then DAPI is a stain that's going to incorporate into DNA. And you can see that there is uh, a large concentration in the middle of that cell. And that's where there is not very much Cas9 immunofluorescence, but there's a lot of DNA presence. Uh, and they also looked at ORF-152. Uh, this is a um, phage 
protein that is generated. And you can see that that uh, is found generally in the middle of the cell, whereas um, with the Cas9, that's found almost excluded from the middle of the cell. And when you overlay these, you can see that indeed the, the DAPI, which represents mostly the phage DNA, because there's a whole lot of phage in there, uh, is largely uh, secluded and not interacting with that Cas9. And from here, what they were able to determine is that there is a protein shell that is protecting this phage DNA from interacting with the Cas9. Now, there was another paper published also very recently in Nature Microbiology, which found a different phage, also a jumbo phage, interestingly, uh, that protects its DNA when it infects the bacterium Serratia. Uh, and so we're going to add links to both of those pages, um, to both of those papers. They're both um, interesting and describe relatively similar phenomena. Um, and you can see here that just like in the other microscopy image, that the phage DNA is concentrated in the middle of the cell and the um, the CRISPR machinery is excluded from where that phage DNA is found. Now, these were both picked up in various outlets. We'll look at that on the next slide. In the Atlantic, uh, the Nature paper was highlighted um, with Joe Bondi Denemy, the lead scientist, stating that uh, he's not really sure how it works, how this particular phage protection works, uh, but we're really in love with it now. And I'm sure that there will be future papers that start to dissect the mechanism by which the phage is able to protect its genomic contents. And if you want to hear more from uh, Joe Bondi uh, Dunamy, then please take a look on uh, the link down below to meet the microbiologist, uh, excuse me, to meet the microbiologist episode in which um, he explains some of these CRISPRs, anti-CRISPRs and anti-anti-CRISPRs. In genetic engineering and biotechnology news, the Nature Microbiology paper was highlighted. And here, uh, the lead scientist, Peter Feinerin, or Finnerin, started to uh, really encapsulate why this research is important altogether. And here he says, this is important because the research of multi-drug resistant bacteria is an issue of global concern, which has led us to a renewed interest in using phages as antibacterials. And jumbo phages may provide excellent therapeutics. Today, we've heard about a bacteriophage nucleus-like structure, which they use to protect their phage DNA. For more updates on phage, CRISPRs, uh, and anti-CRISPR systems, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell so you get a notification every time we have a new video. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time with another Microbial Minutes.